CP. Are you serious? He's gone. Fanny, Fanny, Thomas all the way. Touchdown Redskins, 64 yards. 26 minutes. <laughs> he's pretty sharp, you know. He'll coach you up on the, the Miami guys and everything else. He's kind of he's kind of fun to be around. Got an opinion too. You know, I've been blessed to uh, have the opportunity to go out and be myself and say the things that I say. And you know, for the outside world, they can deal with it how they deal with it. 26 minutes with Clinton Portis, CP. Teach him something. Welcome to 26 Minutes, episode 69. I mean, somebody going to party around the city. <laughs> episode 69. That means a lot, Gabe. I know you've been excited since seeing episode 69. Your own replacer, uh-huh. Gabe Henderson, in the house again today. Replacing Monica McNutt, who's in New York, working with um, the Knicks and everybody else. But shout out to Monica. Let's jump right into it, Gabe. Mm-hmm. One and nine, man. Tough situation going on at the park. Yeah. You know, you walk in and it's kind of just one of those. I'm Over, here. Overcast. Yeah, I'm here. It's yeah. cloudy. It's cloudy every day, you know. Yeah. Um, but you, you get to interact with the guys. Mm-hmm. And uh, you see these guys, you're around these guys. How is the mood? I think the mood is still, I mean, it's not as upbeat as it was when they were one and five. But, I mean, <laughs> a lot of. A lot of guys are still, you know, in tune, and you know, it's like, hey, like I, I signed up for 16 games, so I'm not mm-hmm. going, I'm not going to be, you know, I'm not going to quit on this team. I talked to Ryan Kerrigan yesterday, and that's the first thing he said. He was like, I mean, I signed up for 16 games, not what I, not what I was hoping for, you know, at the beginning of the season, but at the same time, it's like, hey, we got six more games to put it all out on the line. But how hard is this? Like for us, you come into work, and we just have to talk about the team. We have to talk and report of what's going on right. with the team, and. Uh, you try to be even kill or positive, mm-hmm. you know, not not slandering or being harmful to any of the guys. But uh, at the same time, because you're friends with a lot of these guys, you understand what they're going through. So it's kind of heartfelt. You feel right. for them and their families uh, about what they're going through. So you get to this situation and you you see the guys and it's like one, you know, like guys don't really know how to respond right at one and nine it's tough it's tough i mean i don't think any guy in that locker room has ever been one and nine i mean only person i could think of is probably steven sims you know with his career at kansas we talked about it off camera me and steven and it's like he's kind of been in this situation before and but still like you it's, it's so hard to prepare for i mean you, you can't prepare for one and nine but like you got those guys in the locker room like your landon collins that you that you're cool with that you have these conversations with and it's like like bro like what do we do like what do we do i've never been in this situation but i i can recall in 2005 2004 2005 um after we got sean t and we were both depressed we were i think we were two and four um and we were both depressed and we went and got the best thing we could do was go to Walgreens. We got us a bottle of Hennessy Paradise <laughs> and took a flight to Fort Lauderdale. Uh-huh. And no one knew we was coming. And we landed in Fort Lauderdale at maybe 5.30. In the and morning? we went 5.30 in the afternoon. Okay. So we had, had a little walkthrough before you leave. We landed in Fort Lauderdale probably around 5.30 in the afternoon. Uh-huh. No one knew we were there. We went straight to our happy place, and we left out at 3 a.m. So we were there from 6 p.m. to 3 a.m. And it felt like the next day after our hangovers and all of that disappeared, our sorrows were gone. Hennessy Parody, shout out to you. Need you to sponsor 26 <laughs> Minutes. But just to step in, right, you, you get the uh, home debut of Dwayne Haskins and, you know, mix yeah. as you would expect uh for me i always say i don't feel like they put him in in situation to display his strength mm-hmm. and that's the accuracy of deep balls we've seen some pretty good throws from from haskins and then you see some questionable like why would you do that right. like you know take something off of it but the game is sped up and mm-hmm. i understand that um and i understand his energy and trying to get guys involved but his play was all overshadowed by a sideline rant, yeah. which I don't think was a rant. Like, it's asking, hey, what can I do? Yeah. What do I need to do? How can I help? Mm-hmm. That's basically what this was. Mm-hmm. And as usual, when a team is one and nine or in a situation, people find a reason to, to turn it negative. Turn it negative. 
what's your view? I think you, you want a quarterback that that wants to take accountability. And he said it in his press conference, like, hey, like, you know, I'm telling the guys, what can I do to help you guys out? Like, what can we do as a team to, to get back on track? And you, you see after that rant, I mean, they went out and had two two scoring drives. So it, clearly it, did, it, it was something positive that came out of it at the same time. Like you said, when, when you're recording stuff like that or when something like that is captured and it's put out into social media, it's like, all right, look at this one and nine team. Look at look at this and that. Look at, there's so many fingers to point instead of just looking at the underlying message. Hey, there's a young quarterback trying to, you know, be held accountable by his, by his offensive lineman. So it can go both ways. But, you know, for us, I guess for playing, guys that's actually played, you understand that, hey, like, he, he wants to win. I, I would think you want to see emotions in your quarterback, right. especially for a team that uh, kind of seem emotionless. You know, just a, a team that really doesn't have that that person, that in your face individual, or that that guy that just put the team on his back and say, you know what, the hell with this, I got us. Right. You know, right. Um, just to see that spark. You, know, I, I can't call it a spark, but. Just to see that energy. Mm -hmm. um, when you see that energy of someone say, I'm trying to communicate with you. Yeah. I'm trying to ask you, you know what? Because maybe someone, no one else has asked you, what can I do? Right. Like, what are you comfortable with? What do I need to do? Mm -hmm. And I think this is where knowing your teammates come into play. Um, once you get to know, know your teammates and you're honest about your teammates, um, you can kind of, you know their strength. You know yeah, you their know weakness. So when you start practicing with them, you see little small things they do. You go watch film. You see it on tape. Hey, that person is who I thought he was. Right. If your guy is constantly losing on the outside upfield rush, mm -hmm. what you think is coming? Right. Uh, out, outside upfield rush. So once you start to know your personnel and you start to know your guy's strength and weakness, you kind of try to set it up. Right. You know, for me – I would try to set guys up. If I know this guy keep getting beat inside and maybe this play is supposed to go inside, I either need to speed up or tell this guy, you know what, bro, just wash cut. Yeah. Just cut, you know, or wash him down. Let me jump back behind you. But don't let him get you in, in, in the hole and you give me nothing. Right. So you start communicating. And it's not it's not one of those that's caught on, on film and everybody is looking like, oh, what is he trying to do? It's just one of those simple conversations. This is what I need you to do. Right. Or even in the game, for a running back, you get these opportunities that I always say with AP and now that Geis is back and, and Chris Thompson, a guy needs carries mm -hmm. to set up the, the D-line. Because once you get familiar with how a team is attacking you, oh, you can set them up. I might, I might get two yards. I'm right. sacrificing to get – Hey, I'm going to take two yards this play. I'm going to take three yards this play. But now, once I see they're over-pursuing and they're knifing under, mm -hmm. when I cut back, it's going to be off yeah, to the races. Right. So when you get familiarity and you get to see this look repeatedly, you could do that. You right. could make that adjustment and you could get it done. I, I think that's the path, the path that Dwayne Haskins is on mm -hmm. when trying to communicate with his lineman. You know, even stepping up. Hey, if you're going to lose – Lose outside. I can right. step into the pocket. But you can't have your interior linemen lose and your your tight ends lose. I mean, your tackles lose upfield. Uh -huh. You have nowhere to go. So, hey, you know what? If you can lose, lose to the left because I can slide to the right, right. Or lose to the right because I can slide to the left. Whatever it is, I think it was more about asking how can I help you improve or what can I do mm -hmm. uh, to make your life easier. And with that being said, we're going to take a quick break, come right back, talk more skins, and talk around the league. 26 minutes. Fantasy football season is right around the corner, and this season there are more ways to win than ever because FanDuel has more ways to win cash prizes and once-in-a-lifetime experiences during every single game, every single week. Never played FanDuel fantasy football before? Great, because new users get a $5 bonus with their first deposit. Sign up for FanDuel now and get $20 in total bonus. Just make your first deposit to get started, and you'll get an extra $5 in site credit every week for four weeks. Go to FanDuel.com or download the FanDuel app. 
Helping people improve their lives is what should drive business. That's the belief at Coke Industries, which employs more than 65,000 people across America. The team at Coke works together to meet the world's changing needs in transportation, medical care, water filtration, household goods, energy-efficient building products, and everyday technologies, all while consuming fewer resources. See the innovations firsthand at kochindustries.com. Redskins defensive lineman number 93, Jonathan Allen, hates to lose. So he's teaming up with Papa John's and you to help donate to Sasha Brew Youth Work, helping homeless children in our region every day. Team 93 needs you to make it a winning day for your family and these special children. You'll get a large two-topping pizza and an order of wings for just 20 bucks. And Papa John's will donate 93 cents to Sasha Brew Youth Work for every single order. Play to eat, play to give, but play to win because nobody wants to lose. Welcome back to 26 Minutes, episode 69, Gabe Henderson in the house for Monica McNutt, and we're going to come right into it, Performance Player of the Week, presented by Bed Gear, the official mattress and pillow partner of the Washington Redskins, Bed Gear just sent me this bed, man, fancy, real yeah. fancy, I had to go get fitted for it, they sent it to the house, no instructions, <laughs> so it's still sitting in the garage, still sitting in the garage, but it looks comfortable, and I can't wait to put it together. Uh, our performance player of the week would go to none other than Darius Geis yep. and his return um, return to the field. You finally got a, a full game from Geis, and you saw some sparks. Mm -hmm. And in seeing those sparks, it just gives you the – for one, it, what it gives me is everything that he's experienced. You know, prior to being drafted, going to LSU, we all know the story of his upbringing – go to LSU and you're behind Leonard Fournette and you, you pop onto the scene and you kind of get banged up, slip in the draft. Redskins take you, show a glimpse, and knee injury. Right. And you're out the entire season. He trained so hard to get back on the field. And, you know, you get to start nine the week, um, the week, week one of the season. And a lot of negativity came with that. And you go down. Mm -hmm. And – for me, the positive that came out of this game, outside of his performance, numbers weren't uh, crazy, but it was how he stayed focused, how he's worked hard to continue to get on the field. And after missing 25 games. Yeah, 16 and then nine this year. Yeah, So after missing 25 games, for him to come back and – not it wasn't like one of those. Oh, I'm gonna feel my way through. Right. It was he come back trying to truck people, <laughs> trying to spend. Me. Yeah, like like I love his vision of returning to the game. And I've had a conversation with, with guys, and he just simply said, "Man, when I'm on the field, it is what it is. Yeah, like I'm I'm gonna do me. That's basically what he said. So to watch him uh, in in this full recovery." I just think it was special, yeah. you know, and I think he has something, and I think you're starting to see that you have pieces to the puzzle when you look at guys. If Haskins can be be the guy, uh, Terry McLaurin, you know, you got Harmon, uh, you got Sims Jr., you're starting to have some pieces mm -hmm. to build off of. Mm -hmm. And speaking of McLaurin, the connection between Haskins and McLaurin, big, huge play call back early in the game. Um, you never really recover from it. You know, kind of took the momentum away from the team, but then in the in the ending of the game, the I mean, I don't even know how you call that that catch, but yeah. Haskins took a chance, found McLaurin uh, downfield, who just went up and snatched the ball away from mm -hmm. the DB. That's what I want to see. That's what I want to see more of. You know what the crazy thing is, and literally two plays before that, Terry Miller was on the sideline, so I'm usually filming the bench. And he walked up the field. I gave him a head nod. He was like, yo, they just got to give me a chance. He's like, you know what? I'm about to just tell them to give me a chance. Literally, that next play he went in, and it was a fade ball. Threw up, threw it up, 50-50 ball. He came down with it. It was like, I told you so. To looked at uh, Coach Ike. It's like, I told you so. Just give me a chance. Just give me a chance. And, like, having a guy like that with that mindset, man, that's what you need. And, and he's a young guy. So, I mean, you already know he's going to bring that fire. But at the same time, you need to have a guy like that that's, that's always saying, hey, I need the ball. I want the ball. If you if you throw it up, it's either going to be an incompletion or I'm coming down with it. And 90% of the time, I'm coming down with it. And he sh I mean, he showed all year that 
hey, I, I'm the guy. He only had four targets last week, but every time I feel like every time the ball comes his way, it, there's only going to be one person coming out with the ball. You know, I, I look at him, and yeah, I was really excited. He's been a guest of the show as well, a huge fan, um, especially with him and guys. You yeah. know, their energy is the type of players you have to build around. Their energy becomes contagious because these are guys that can carry a team that's willing to make a play. I know for him, it's his first year, and it's hard to just kind of come over, come and take over, I feel like you're stepping on anyone's shoes right. and demand the ball. But he has to get to where he demands the ball. And his wide receivers coach, Ike Hilliard, has to understand, hey, I got someone special. Right. This kid can be really special if we get him 10 attempts a game, right. if we get him 15 attempts a game. Because you're taking – I feel like so often you have dead plays, you have wasted plays, mm -hmm. you know, and it, it's – you. Catch a little ball for three yards or four yeah. yards. That does nothing for you. And you, you're like, oh, we moved the chains yeah. or we're trying to move the chains. I just feel like sometimes you got to take a shot. And you got to put um, put players in position to win. You know, you look at Fitzpatrick in Miami. And Miami was going nowhere fast. <laughs> All of a sudden, you put Fitzpatrick back in the game. And all of a sudden, guys are starting to come to life. And it's because he's going to take shots. He right. understands what's where and who my best players are. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to get these guys the ball. And all of a sudden, you see the stats shoot up. You see the Miami Dolphins go from no wins, I think, two, two wins at yeah. this point. Um, but you got to go down behind your best players. Okay. And for, for me, your best player is McLaurin. Mm -hmm. And – Guys yeah. on the offensive side of the ball. AP still mm -hmm. really AP is still really good. But when you're talking about building behind a young nucleus of guys, I'm feeding these guys the rest of the season yeah. because I wanna I wanna expose Haskins. I wanna see what Haskins arm is. I wanna see if Haskins capable. I wanna create a connection for fans to mm -hmm. fall in love with. And that's Haskins and, and McLaurin. McLaurin. Now everyone else, they get in where they fit in. Right. But I'm designing plays to get him open. I'm right. designing plays to give him an opportunity. Mm -hmm. I'm designing plays to say, hey, you know what? I'm going to get him one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. And I can move him around. And I can run a wheel route. Like, plays that, that's hard to double team right. because you can game plan for it. But I'm going to expose these guys. And right. until you start to do that more, it, it's going to be hard because you're kind of high and you're holding back. You're a spark plug. Mm -hmm. You're holding back the guy that can ignite right. because you saw his raw emotions mm -hmm. after the catch. Right. You know, when he spiked the ball on the sideline, that's raw emotions. Right. That's emotions that's saying, like, here. man, I, I told y'all yeah. to come to me. Double you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, bleep, bleep told right. you all to come to me. So, uh, in saying that, hey, come to me. Come back to me. Uh, episode 69, come back to me. We still got a lot left for you guys. Score points this holiday season with holiday games from the Virginia Lottery. The holiday lineup is ready to deliver. The kind of fun you expect from lottery games. For $1, you can play the Naughty or Nice Scratcher and have a chance to win up to $1,000. The $2 holiday cash games give players a shot at winning up to $20,000. $5,000 overload features 300 5,000 prizes in the entire game. The Holiday 7 Multiplier Scratcher is a clear way to have fun. And $600 Holiday Bonus Cash is loaded with over $6,500, $600 prizes in the entire game. Plus, there's Virginia's New Year's Millionaire Raffle 2. And don't forget that you can play holiday-themed games on your mobile device with Mobile Play. All you need is a Virginia Lottery app and to be at a lottery retailer. Give the gift of Virginia Lottery holiday games. I'm trying to meet that boy Clint Porter's though. They say that boy that they say he smooth on his feet. I'm trying to teach him something. Teach him something. Teach him something. Welcome back to 26 Minutes. Myself, Gabe Henderson in the house right now. It, it, as we go around the league, man, oh, I think we were so excited about Cap getting an opportunity. Yeah. And, you know, it kind of came out of nowhere. It caught people off guard. Like, wow, Cap getting a workout. And it, it it was building. It was setting It was setting the stage for Cap to go out and perform. And it's kind of leading up to it. You're looking forward to it. You're looking forward to it. You know, you're watching college football. And it's like, okay, okay. I want to okay. see how this turned out. And then you you get the mess. Press release. Right, you get the mess. Like, 
oh, it's been moved because his camp is requesting this and his camp wants this and these demands and this is what the NFL attempted to do. And I said, man, this is really messy. Mm -hmm. And for me, I don't think it's ever been about Colin Kaepernick talent. Mm -hmm. Everyone knew he had talent, which I said this last week. You knew he had a big arm. You know he has escapability. Yeah. You know he can carry a team. But what no one wants to deal with, because a lot of people are pulling for cap to get signed. And you want cap on the field. Say, so, hey, you know what? You're still trying to get a message across that's been lost. Right. right? And I understand, hey, whatever you're you're pushing and everything else, it's cool. But you get an opportunity. And you got 20 teams coming. 25. 25 teams coming. And you decide to change the venue because you want it your way. Mm -hmm. And you guys want X, Y, Z. If you're looking for an opportunity and 25 teams are showing up with representatives, go out and display your talent. Right. When I saw the Kunta Kente shirt, mm -hmm. it, the message was lost. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. Like, you're still, instead of, people are pulling for you. To get an opportunity because they feel as if you want to play football. At this point, I don't know if you want to play football. I don't think he does. Because you got the golden opportunity. You got the golden stage. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. if anyone sees, get to question you after. In your press conference, what did you deliver? The message <laughs> yeah. to tell, tell your owners. To stop being scared. To stop being scared. Yeah. You could have said that on any Nike commercial. Right. You could have said that on any platform. But you use it. On the day you get an opportunity that should be about your skill set. Mm -hmm. And then you ruin it for a bunch of people that's trying to help you. Hugh Jackson trying to get back into the league. Respected coach. Hey, here's his opportunity. Mm -hmm. So you blow it for you. Some of the wide receivers. You blow it for those guys. But it's all for you to get a message that basically say, tell your owners to stop running from me. Yeah. It's like I'm going to be who I am. And – I, I can't I can't agree more with you. I mean, it was just there, there's such a I guess the word would be distraction. I think it, even if let's say he didn't do all of that, let's say he he had his outfit, you know, he wore everything the NFL wanted him to wear. He didn't change anything. I do think he I mean, he's a elite talent. He should be a starting quarterback in the NFL. But three years removed, he he is more of a distraction in in the locker room because you got to think every single media outlet. They're going to be there. They're going to want to ask every single player, like, hey, what about Cat? What about this? Like, the message gets lost. And, and that's then, a spectacle nobody wants to deal with. Exactly. Like, and, and I was, like, I'm all for Cap getting the opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. But for the circus that comes along with it, nobody wants this circus, man. Like, your, your message is so lost. Your message is so distorted. I'm not telling you to get out of the community. Stop, stop fighting for what you believe in. I think the cause in. is great. Yeah, the cause is great. But the reality of... You get an opportunity. What is this about? The cause, you want to keep on promoting the cause, mm -hmm. or do you want an opportunity to play football? Right. Because if you want an opportunity to play football, it's kind of unspoken rules. We don't mm -hmm. really talk religion. We don't really talk politics. Right. We don't. You, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like You talk football. Mm -hmm. All this other stuff, that's for y'all. That's not my specialty. That's not my gift. This is what I'm here to do, and that's play football. Right. And it's kind of getting lost. And, you know, as a fan, you cheer on cap. Like you, you, you want to appreciate him. You kind of want to respect him, but at the same time, your message is so lost. Yeah, for sure. So, what do what do you think is his next move? I really think he just wasted his opportunity. But uh, with that being said, before we get out of here, you had an incident on Thursday night football: Cleveland Browns, Pittsburgh Steelers. Miles Garrett yep. uh, snatch off Mason Rudolph helmet and. <laughs> You know, got about. Now, I'm gonna tell you what I enjoyed about this, and not that you enjoy anything, but how how the Pouncy twin responded. Yeah, you talking about? Hey, that. listen, if if I'm going somewhere, I'm going with him. I'm <laughs> that's somebody I can go with. That's somebody I can go with. Hey, I can go with him because you know he got for him back. to take up. Yeah, I know. I know. I got somebody that's gonna be <laughs> the same way I am. He come in kicking, throwing, Ready. but on, on this stage, you know, as NFL. Really doesn't want this on the stage. I think Miles Garrett just kind of why you even snap in that situation mm -hmm. uh, with no time left on the clock. You already won the game and put yourself in this situation, and then you get suspended. Right? Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of talent in Miles Garrett, 
and he was appealing his indefinite suspension, which for me, we were having this discussion and it said in the rule book, a player is to be ejected and uh, penalized penalty, yeah. and, you know, a fine comes with mm-hmm. that. So for you to take six games and next six games away from him, I think is a, a little much. Mm-hmm. I think his his penalty should actually – um, and you did the same with Vontez Burfecht, who was a repeat offender right. who constantly did things. And, you know, he's constantly got opportunities. So for Garrett, I just honestly think he he his appeal should lessen games. He shouldn't be done for the season for that accident, although it was a horrible situation and it could have been a lot worse than it turned out to be. That's his. That's his learning moment. I think you. It is a learning moment. It, it definitely is his learning moment. But you. You don't suspend. My, you don't suspend him for the playoffs. I would suspend him for the rest of the year. But like I said, the message is playoffs. Yeah, I mean Cleveland hey, <laughs> playoffs. Then I mean it's gonna be tough for him to make it. Might be a walk wild card team. But like if they if they were in that position, like if they were in a position to make the playoffs, I say hey susp- hey you suspended the rest of the season or six games or seven whatever. I don't know how many games they got left. But at the end of the day, it's like. Mason Rudolph should have got suspended for something. Like, I mean, a game, two games, like he, he's still the initiator. Like, I don't agree with anything Miles Garrett did, but at the same time, it's got to be some type of balance. I mean, you, you suspend Pouncey, you suspend um, – um, The other line. Right. Yeah, yeah. And then you don't suspend the initiator? It's, it's like there's, there's, some, there's some imbalance in, in that situation. But it's a learning experience for him. I think his, his um, appeal should be reduced to just the regular season. And don't let it go from there. But if they make the playoffs, you you got to let them play. And it shouldn't go until next year. They're saying indefinitely until further notice. I'm like, what is what is what is further notice? Well, I'll tell you what further notice is. No imbalance in episode 69. Some people should go out and celebrate episode 69. Be <laughs> as free as you would like to be. All right. Appreciate you listening to 26 Minutes. Join us for episode 70 coming soon. Are uninvited pests ruining your plans? Let PMSI, the pest control partner of the Washington Redskins, handle it for you. Call today for your free inspection, and they'll work around your schedule to provide you the best solution possible to defend your home territory against pests of all kinds, including mold. Visit MyPMSI.com for the game plan to control the pests on your home turf. That's MyPMSI.com. At Coke, our 67,000 U.S. employees make things that make your game days better, like fertilizer for greener turf and stronger paper products for tailgating. Viewing the game from your couch? Coke also makes the electronic components and TVs and smart devices so you can watch your Redskins victory anywhere. Coke, we make that. See it all at kochmakesthat.com. That's Coke makes that. Com. And now, time for another Honda highlight. The air was cold, but the deals were heating up at the Happy Honda Day sales event. With the entire versatile roster on clearance, all signs pointed to victory. Turbocharged tandems like the Accord and Civic, or all-wheel drive SUVs like the CRV, HRV, Pilot, and Passport. With clearance pricing, everyone's a champion. Have your own Honda highlight with a clearance deal during the Happy Honda Day sales event. Now it's your local Honda dealer. Hey, Redskins Nation. It's the old pro Daryl Green. You know, when I retired from this Super Bowl winning franchise, I set my sights on transitioning to another winning team, Main Street Bank. I joined Main Street Bank the same year I retired from the Redskins, and we've been serving the D.C. metropolitan area ever since. Online and mobile banking with Main Street Bank is as easy as intercepting a pass from a Dallas Cowboy quarterback. And that was pretty easy. Main Street Bank. Member FDIC.